I'm now sitting in a 2018 model E Golf and I will do several tests today. Uh, we'll do the range test, uh, measure the capacity, a high speed test, uh, check the weight of it, and uh, measure the noise. And I will also give you an impression of how it is to drive the E Golf. So I've tested this car before, but then it was with different tires. At this time, I have a 16 inch Continental Viking Contact 7, which is more common than the last test was with uh, Hankook tires. And I believe that these tires are more quiet. So uh, yes, so right now we are juicing up and uh, we will drive on my regular route and then we'll measure everything. So yes, I think we are good to go now. And the first thing I notice when I sit in this e-golf and start driving it is that it handles quite well. You know, um, lately I've been testing so many other cars like Kona, uh, E-Niro, um, Leaf and uh, Kia Soul and you know those cars are kind of tall uh, and they tend to roll more in the corners even if they are EVs but the Golf sits so tight uh, when you take roundabouts when you take turns it is so it feels like driving a Tesla so Tesla is, is tuned more like that you know to have a more sporty ride whereas uh, many of the other cars I mentioned has a more comfortable ride and they are naturally taller so they tend to roll more but if you want a very sporty EV in this price range then golf is among them yeah All right, we are back at Nibbenes. We've been driving back and forth here, uh, doing some test, high-speed test, and um, the result is, um, uh, and the low speed, I call it low speed test, which will simulate a mix of highway driving and city driving. Uh, so then I drive at 90 kilometers per hour, and um, the consumption was 172 watt hour per kilometer. And if we assume a 31.5 kilowatt hour available energy, that would be 180 kilometers of range in winter. Now keep in mind it was minus five degrees Celsius outside. And then in a high speed test, which is the 120 kilometers per hour test. Now some people debate that that's not really high speed. Well, it's, it's to simulate um, highway, motorway, freeway driving. Consumption was 233 watt hour per kilometer and that equals to 135 kilometers of range. Again, winter range yeah so i will uh, drive home now and uh, check the result from uh, the noise test Yes, we're back in Oslo and I look at the results from the noise test. It turns out that Leaf is the most quiet car in this class. Yeah, so look at the table here. See that at 80 kilometers per hour, there's not much difference between these cars, but at 100 and 120 kilometers per hour, then the E-Golf is so quiet. It's even more quiet than the Leaf, except that the Leaf had 
17 inch um, wheels so um, I talked to Nissan about this and I, I told them that you know maybe you guys should have um, 16 inch on the press cars but they for some reason want to put 17 inch maybe just so they look good but the, the negative result of that is that they are more noisy they consume more energy yeah so maybe I should try a uh, 16 inch on leaf one day to see if it can match e-golf but all right uh, so you know what I found out is that e-golf drives pretty well it handles well it has good uh, build quality really nice um, interior like interior feel all that as for EV, okay, I'm lacking some uh, charging information, like charging speed and state of charging percentage would be nice. But I guess uh, most average drivers, they don't care about that. They just plug in, charge to 80% or whatever, and unplug. So I mean, there, there's got to be a reason why so many Norwegians bought this car. Uh, now, the thing is that uh, it's... I'm, I'm looking at uh, all the documents here, but the Leaf... Oh, sorry, uh, the Eagle is actually pretty expensive. So in, in Norway, at least this one, which is uh, a top spec uh, Eagle, cost 380,000 nook, and that's about uh, 80,000 nook more than a leaf. So, uh, all right, but anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.